Hello, you beautiful person, you. Today we've got some good Karens out to show just exactly why we call them Karens. Also, sorry for any normal Karens out there, your name just got the short end of the stick. In this story, this Karen thinks she can make NASA do whatever she wants. This is posted by Reddit user Cakebug321. Karen the Rocket Scientist I work at a hotel in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Today was supposed to be the launch of the Artemis rocket, so of course, hundreds of thousands of people flock to the country to watch the rocket go off, which takes about 30 seconds and literally looks like every other rocket they shoot off all the time. When people call to make reservations for a big launch like this, we advise them to make the reservations for a few days, just in case the launch is scrubbed, which happens like a lot. We let them know that they can always check out early, but that if the launch is scrubbed, all the hotels are sold out and we won't be able to extend their stay. Well, sure enough, the launch today was scrubbed. And even though we gave people a warning before they booked, sure enough, I had no less than six Karens at the front desk demanding that I let them stay another night. But of course, we're sold out. And just like every other hotel in the area, my favorite Karen today wanted me to not only extend her reservation, but also compensate for her room because the rocket didn't launch. And that's the whole reason I'm here. I explained very patiently that we were sold out of rooms and I wouldn't be providing any discounts because the rocket going off isn't our problem. She told me verbatim, well, you tell the fuckers at NASA I expect to have the rocket launched by tonight, as promised. It can't be that hard. Like, sure, let me get on the phone with NASA. Karen says the rocket must go, <laughs> so fuck it, let's launch the bitch. Wow, I have no words for this. Surely she's joking, right? Right? I mean, I'm glad she doesn't work for NASA or any space program of any country. Next up, OP encounters a Karen who still wants CDs for an antivirus. This story is posted by Reddit user Visual Suggestion 487 Apparently, I cheated a woman for not having an antivirus CD. Yes, you just read that. So, I work at an office store's tech desk. This Karen comes in and picks up Norton's antivirus box that has a slip with a subscription code. She asks, Hello, do you guys have the CD for this? I can't find it. I answered, Uh, I don't believe we sell them in here, but let me check on that for you. I go and check and I not only don't find a CD for Norton, but all the other antiviruses that we had are all code subscription based. I go back and inform her about this and man did I set off a bomb. I need to speak to the manager now. Okay, I answered. My manager comes in and tells me that he is going to take a look as well and see if there were any CDs. Meanwhile, I proceeded to tell Karen about that if we don't have it, I can help her find one on Amazon and she rolls her eyes. Which I would like to do too, because that was like my second or third customer that shift. Poor guy. I'm glad I don't work in retail. Anyways, the manager comes back and lets her know that unfortunately, we don't have any CD antiviruses. He got all angry at us and told us that we cheated us people on social security. My manager just walks away and she continues to yell things like, I got the CD from last year. I told her, Respectfully, ma'am, that's how technology works. CDs aren't as relevant and plus the code can at least work on a computer whether it has a CD or not. She goes, I am calling Norton and complain. Now, at that point, I could have said, okay, that's fine, ma'am. But I got so pissed off and told her, I understand you are upset at this matter, but what did you want Norton to do? It's most computers that stopped having CD drives. What did you expect? Norton to still make CDs while most people that have newer computers not have a CD drive? She checked out a couple of things and stormed out. <laughs> if her PC still has a disk drive, then her downloading Norton via dial-up is gonna take a long time. No wonder she wants a CD. As for our final story, our poor vet gets accused of spreading diabetes. Yep, you heard me right. This story is from Reddit user Lost Department 6536. Karen's dog gets a diabetes diagnosis and she blames the vet. <laughs> He's just saying it sounds so crazy. Anyways, so this happened about two weeks ago. I'd taken my dog into the vet for a post-surgery follow-up. 
had swallowed a piece of his toy and it had become lodged in his lower intestine. His surgery went fine and he's all better now. My vet's office is still only allowing one person in the office at a time, so most appointments a technician picks up and drops off the animals from the owner in the parking lot. No big deal. I was parked waiting for them to bring any dog out and was sitting on the hood of my car waiting for the technician to help get my dog in my car. Parked next to me is Karen. While I'm waiting, a technician brings Karen's obviously older, very overweight basset hound out to her. Not being judgmental, just giving the facts. She got out of her car to get her dog and we will call him Roscoe. The vet technician starts telling her that Roscoe is very overweight and that they have discovered that he is severely diabetic. They are very concerned due to his age and want to start an aggressive dietary and medication plan for him. He was explaining the issues with his weight and how it can impact the disease when she interrupts. She looks right at the technician and half screams, Why would you do this to my dog? Now I had been just staring off into the distance during all of this, but my head spun right toward them when she said that. The technician asks what she means by that and starts on a tirade about how the vet's office infected her sweet Roscoe with this disease and demanded to know why they would do that. The tech looks flabbergasted, as am I, and he kind of glances over me as if to see if I'm hearing this. <laughs> I can almost imagine the technician's eyes asking for help from Ovi. He tries to explain to her that they obviously did not give Roscoe diabetes. Obviously and tries to explain the disease but she's having none of it. She starts yelling about she is going to call a lawyer and own them, and that if her dog dies, it's on them. I can't sit idly by anymore and say, Ma'am, you need to stop for a second. I get that you are upset as your pup is sick. However, the vet's office did not give him diabetes. It didn't happen. Please calm down and listen to what this man is trying to tell you. She spins on me and says, What the hell do you know? Do you have diabetes? I said, no I don't, however my husband does, so I do know what causes it, what aggravates it, and how it's treated. She then tells me humans can't get diabetes. Hold on, humans can't get diabetes? Diabetes is a lie? And even if they could, it wouldn't be the same as dogs. I, I just stare at this woman and say, wow, you really are this crazy ma'am. I'm sorry your dog is sick, but at least for his sake, do what is needed to get him treated for this. It can and will kill him otherwise. She cussed me and the technician out about us not knowing anything and she looks at Roscoe and says, I'm taking you for a cheeseburger. They are lying. You aren't overweight and you don't have diabetes. I wonder how Roscoe got so overweight. The tech begs the woman to please not do that, to at least take time to research the disease, but she tells him to fuck off, gets in her car, and leaves. I look at the tech and ask, are you okay? He says yeah, but he feels so bad for that dog. I agree with him and say that woman is nuts. He says yeah and says thanks for standing up for him and Roscoe. By this time, my dog was brought out. I still worry about Roscoe. Poor pup deserves better. For obvious reasons. Can't believe I have to say this. Diabetes is an actual thing, okay? Don't don't believe anything this, this woman says. I was just joking earlier about it being a lie. Anyhow, these stories make me feel thankful that I've never encountered a Karen in my life. Yet. Hopefully, I never will. They're just so um, stubborn. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Links to the original post are down in the description below. As usual, if you have your own story, remember to send it at ifeftup at gmail.com. If you like what you saw or heard, please do consider giving me a sub, a like, and hitting that bell button. Hell, go leave a comment down there as well. All for the great YouTube algorithm. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!